hi loves welcome back to my channel and to today's video where i will be recommending some cozy books for you know some cozy time some cozy weathers uh yeah so where i'm at now it is the rainy season is fast approaching and i am living for it because here we have a little season the dry season and the rainy season and it goes without saying that the rainy season is as cozy as it gets like it doesn't get better than that i decided to come up here um come on here rather and recommend some books that i feel like will just go perfectly with this weather you know when it's the weekend it's drizzling you know there's a, a chill in the air you know trees are swaying all of that you are bundled up you have your um hot beverage with you coffee tea hot chocolate whatever it may be and you know you just need a book to relax right you need a book that is like vibes and um you know a little bit of mystery that will have you wondering a little that will just get you into that mood that will complement you know the whole white noise of the rain hitting against your windows your roof the ground whatever it is these are the kind of books i will be recommending in today's video so if you are interested please stay tuned also if at any point in this video you have decided to add any book from this list to your tbr please do leave a like for me and also you know as we go on comment if you have read any of these books that i'm talking about if you liked them and think that they would fit perfectly for this cozy rainy season we are approaching so yes let's jump right to it and let me tell you about right so uh these books i kind of want to separate them into categories based on like genres i probably will put time segment and all but the first two books i will be telling you guys about are fantasy books right i don't really read a lot of fantasy and i know that fantasies really get in there it's how cozy they can be but like i said i don't read a lot of fantasies so i only have two for the fantasy section and the first one i will be telling you guys about is a far wilder magic by alison sat so this book for me is atmosphere and vibes literally the uh way this book is the way it like focuses on the surroundings um you know where the world is setting just the way things are is atmosphere and vibes <laughs> basically um it has a plot obviously it's not one of those books that is just like um all vibes no clothes but the vibes are there right um and so this book is a fantasy romance um a young adult fantasy romance if i'm not mistaken and it's basically set in this world where magic is sort of called an alchemy treated as stuff is science that you can learn in school but the catch is that you have to have an affinity for it and so we have this main character boy who you know really wants to be an alchemist he really wants to do it but so far all his masters have not seen potential in him they have literally just told him to give up on his hopes of becoming an alchemist it also doesn't help that you know he's from the let me call it a tribe that is sort of regarded as uh inferior and you know so that outcasts in the world this book is set in because of like their religious beliefs and every other such thing and so in this book a major theme that comes into play is like religion and like you know um tribes if you will call it um and so he is going to this lady's house who he believes is his last hope she's a very you know well-known alchemist she has made a name for herself and all that and so he gets to this house and he sees that it's abandoned basically it's like this manor surrounded by like trees and the forest and all and the only person inhabiting this house is this girl who happens to be the daughter of the master he's supposed to come and meet and this is her daughter like i've said so her mom the mom has abandoned the daughter to go on this you know wild search that will further her research or her progress as an alchemist or something of the sort and so the girl he meets at this manor is not very enthusiastic about this whole alchemy thing if you will and so she's not like really pleased to see him and somehow they get along they enter this um competition where there's usually held like 
I can't remember the time period. I know it's not annually. Let's say like 10 years, every 10 years or so. I can't really remember. But there's this competition that is held where there's this creature that some religions consider sacred, the minority religions. <laughs> the majority religions consider this animal an animal that is sort of an abomination that needs to be killed. And so there's this competition that is held for it. And somehow two of them um, end up, you know, teaming up to go on the hunt for this animal for certain reasons um despite their personal beliefs or their roots or where they're coming from and all that and it's just really great this is such a cozy read i mean we have this sort of abandoned manor you know everybody talks about it as if it's haunted because of the things that happened in that house we have just this girl living here with her pet sort of like a dog the second book i will be recommending is sorcery of thorns by margaret rogerson this is such a beautiful YA fantasy honestly it was one of my best reads of last year um, so it basically follows this girl who is a librarian right librarians are in charge of like taking care of these grimoires which are like books with like souls trapped in them so they're like sort of bookish like creatures slash monsters um, more often than not they're harmless or not dangerous enough but uh, there are some levels of grimoires that need to be treated with caution that need to be uh, kept away very carefully and very protected this book starts off the main character girl has been implored or has been asked to join her mother figure in this library to lock up this very important um, grimoire right uh, so she helps her the person that acts as her mother figure in this book because most of librarians if not all are orphans right um, and so she helps her out that same night her mother figure is killed by that same grimoire and she somehow ends up killing that grimoire and so she's now under suspicion that she's the one that released the grimoire and so this sorcerer comes to take her because apparently it's like um a division if you will between like uh, normal humans and sorcerers yes um and so he comes to take her to their side of the world or their side of town for sort of a trial and unlikely alliances begin to form um, hidden secrets are uncovered and all those kind of things it's just a really nice fantasy it's a fantasy romance yeah and why i am recommending this book is that it sucks you in so like you are in bed you're bundled up and you are just you know ready to read a book and relax this book literally transports you to this world like i don't know how else you get to relax than not just being here <laughs> like literally you are there immediately i saw this review of this book i'll probably put it up on the screen if i can still find it where the person literally explains how quick it is to get into the world that this book is set in which makes it literally one of the best things about this book plus like the romance in this i really love how like quiet it is same with um what's it called a far wilder magic by alison sap the next three i will be recommending are historical books they sort of have a fantasy element to them sort of but we can't really call it fantasy fantasy it's more in the sense that you know there are things that can't really be explained happening in these books right so um it's a situation where stuff is happening and maybe the entire mechanism behind what is happening is never really explained or there are just some strange things happening that you know it's never really explained why those things are happening but at the end of the day they are happening and the main characters have to navigate those happenings and they're all historical like i've said right so the first one is mariana by susanna kersley mariana is a book that sort of takes place between two alternate timelines right and so we have this girl in modern times from when she was little till now that she's in her 30s i believe she has come across this house about like three times by coincidence by pure coincidence as far as she gets lost and is this how she sees right so the first time she ended up at this house she was little at that time but she said that this was going to be her house where she lived 
right and so now she's in her 30s i think this is the third time she has come across this particular house by pure coincidence again and uh she now has the means and so she goes to purchase this house this house is like in a sort of small town where a lot of people know a lot of people right is this manor it's called the gray weather house it has been abandoned for quite a while but basically she now starts to inhabit this house and as she's you know in the house you know carrying, act carrying out activities she finds out that she's somehow transported to some time in the past i think like the 1600s or maybe even earlier and when she's transported to that time she finds herself living as this girl called mariana Right, so Mariana has a kind of very interesting life going on. She has this um, forbidden love thing going on. There's this bit of danger element as to where she's living currently. And so while she is Mariana in that time, she doesn't have consciousness of her present self. But when she now comes back to consciousness, she remembers everything that happened to her as Mariana. Also coincidence, or let's just say faith, that Mariana is her exact look alike and so this book was kind of like playing around with things like eternal soulmates time traveling if you will and it was just really fun and just really cozy because i mean you know this whole manner thing you're going into the past you're having a forbidden love it's just really a book that you can sit back and relax with during this time like really quiet in a way that as much as you know mariana has a somewhat eventful life it's not like shouting at you it's not like um all over the place it's not like noisy it's just really quiet and you know really cozy right so yeah uh then the next one i will be recommending or the next two rather are uh, shakespeare retellings right so the first one is hamnet by maggie o'farrell and this basically is supposed to be sort of a reimagination as to how Shakespeare's play Hamlet came about. The synopsis of this book says that um, apparently back then Hamlet and Hamlet were interchangeable and meant the same thing. And so we have this small boy called Hamlet and at the time his sister is sick she is i think suffering from this plague and she's about to die this is not a spoiler because it's in the synopsis but he ends up dying in very strange mysterious ways which absolutely i loved i mean it did stress me out a bit when i was reading it but right now i i really love how this book was you know done i love how this story was told and so that's what the synopsis tells us right this boy his sister is very sick she's going to die but he ends up dying she doesn't die right um but and so you would expect that this story revolves around the boy but actually really doesn't it revolves more around his parents if you will so his mom and his dad so his mom is this person who can sort of communicate with the dead uh she's also like very knowledgeable when it comes to like healing herbs and poisonous herbs and so you know people think of her as that odd lady um somehow referred to her sometimes as a witch and other so the mom was like the major mysterious element in this book and also how Hamnet died. I feel like it was very interesting that it was presented the way it was presented in this book. And yeah, so, you know, with this book, we see the story of this man, you know, go through things, fall in love with this lady, um, start his own family. They are going through problems, you know, the plague falls upon their village or something like that. And they are just this tiny mysterious things going on um especially surrounding hamnet's mom agnes that is just never really explained and so i just feel like it's vibes right those are what vibes are <laughs> they don't really you just know that okay i i understand what's going on but i really don't understand what's going on and i feel like it's just perfect i would also really recommend that for hamnet you would want to maybe read it as a body read because i know that i read this as a body read and i can just imagine if i didn't read this as a body read right because there's a whole lot going on like i said a whole lot of like um, mysterious happenings things it's sort of like 
do I call it a supernatural element to this book that is just never really explained like the author does not care to explain and so I feel like it will do a lot of good for your sanity if you like have people to discuss your theories with about certain things in this book right so yes that's that and the next one I would recommend is Miranda and Caliban by Jacqueline Carey so Miranda and Caliban is a retelling of the tempest right but from the perspective of i don't know the name of the people i've never read any shakespeare's work in my entire life but i know that after i read miranda and caliban i had to go and see what the actual story was just because of how it ended but i don't really if you have read the tempest you probably know who miranda is and so this is more from her perspective and her side of things and sort of reimagination as to what could have actually happened you know in comparison to the story because in the tempest i don't know the names of the people here but what i do know about the tempest is that there's this guy who was exiled or probably ran away to this island with his daughter and then he like does some magical spells that um brings the king and his son to this island and sort of bewitches them and so that the the prince especially so that the prince falls in love with his daughter and he can sort of rise back to his position if you will that's the general gist from what i read of what happened in the tempest and so this is told from the perspective of his daughter miranda right um so a reimagination as well if you will um and so with this we have Miranda and her dad they are the only two civilized inhabitants of this island right and then there is this wild boy who walks on all fours he has he sort of literally is a wild boy as the name implies and he sometimes leaves gifts at their doorstep right um, and so the dad one day thinks it is necessary to civilize this uncivilized wild boy and he introduces he introduces caliban into you know their lives basically and i think from the original story caliban um rapes miranda in the original tempest right but in this reimagining we see these two um, young children basically who were alone on this island with this adult who um, finds it necessary to perform all these weird rituals, you know, aligning the moon and the sun and like killing the white chicken and stuff like that. Look, the whole time it was just like, ah, so ah, uh, native doctors do exist over there. <laughs> I'm sorry, literally, that was the only explanation I could come up with. He was literally a native doctor, if you know what a native doctor is um uh so yeah he does all these weird rituals that you know we see these two children who are alone together on this island we see them you know grow form a friendship you know form a bond even like have crushes on each other and stuff like that but like this book is on this list because you know we have an island with only just three people and the spirit <laughs> it really doesn't get cozier than that it deserted island with only three inhabitants four if you want to count that nosy spirit and very really annoying spirits at that time but like yeah so uh also the way this book is presented i feel like the shakespeare retellings have a thing going for them and then um the next section of books i will be recommending uh Okay, the last one of the list in historical books um, that are not romances, because the next one I will talk about are historical romances. Last one of the list is this book. It's not really a fantasy, it's just a historical book that I read last year that I really loved and I think is also a good fit for The Cozy Times, which is um, the Ravenscar Dynasty by Barbara Taylor Bradford and so the Ravenscar Dynasty follows this guy Edward when this book starts off he's like really he's just really young yes um, and it starts off when he's his dad 
his brother, his younger brother, his uncle and his cousin died in a fire. And so like because of how their family is, you know, uh, their family is sort of respected in society. People like him. He's the golden boy, basically. Um, we he now has to like take over, right? And he also wants to kind of take revenge because he and his his uncle, his other uncle, suspect foul play. He and his cousin rather suspect foul play in the deaths of their loved ones, and so they want to take revenge. Also, like follow him trying to take over from his father and take rightful claim to you know the company that is actually supposed to belong to them and i'm recommending this because it really is just i mean the synopsis went ahead to like you know promise us drama action this one that one but this book really is just following him trying to do all these things honestly it's very quiet and it's also like really fun in that way where you know you're not jumping out of your seat as anything that is happening because they have set you up for it but you're also not bored because you really want to see where it goes so there are also like other interesting factors to this book with like different love interests and you know people just doing things the main focus being edward in his time right and so apparently he was based on one medieval king like this <laughs> can i remember who at the time i also absolutely know nothing about this medieval king but that may mean something to you know some of you watching this video but uh it's really it's just a telling you know how sometimes you just sit and read through someone's life from one point to the other that's literally one of the best things to do in cozy season then moving on to the historical romances they're literally just two the first one that is really cozy that i have read um that i haven't really talked about on this channel is seeking persephone by sarah m ide so this is like a relatively old book if i'm not mistaken and it just follows this girl her family needs dying dying um their financial situation is not the best right so they are poor basically and you know they need she needs to take care of her family especially like since her mom passed and everything and they're quite a large family and so she gets married to this suitor this stranger she has never even met this person but the person um proposes or offers to you know elevate her family wealth if she gets married to him and he the person the suitor arranging this proposal he needs to get married for a reason or the other i can't really remember at this point sorry about that but he needs to get married right um and because he has this scar on his face or something i think he has this deformity either it's his ear or he has this scar on one side of his face so he He's not looking around to you know go and look for suitors and so he's like propositioning somebody who will be desperate to marry him right and so they get married and it's now he's just really like arrogant not really arrogant very cold hearted towards her you know it's not what she expected coming in i mean i don't know what she was expecting getting married to somebody you have never like they met at the altar you know that was their first time meeting um and but it was not what she expected so she getting her feelings hot they're just navigating it and this is a clean romance and it is just great the angst between them both was literally so good it really is just such a nice thing to read on a rainy day especially because it's like it's so short and you can binge it on the weekend and so i really 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 recommend second person for by sarah m eden also you know this is her name is persephone so obviously the hades persephone retelling comes into play sometimes in this book and yeah it's just really great you know grumpy she's not sunshine um she's not really like you know the brightest happiest person ever to exist but she's very feminine you guys know that the feminine girls especially like historical fictions i feel like they nail those so well are 
my favorite type of girls ever in all fiction the next historical romance that sort of gives off this very cozy vibes you know can read in one sitting binge in one sitting you know on a rainy weekend uh, in your bed bundled up is her base born bright bridegroom by alice cold breaths <laughs> right her base born bridegroom by alice cold breaths and so we follow this girl who is like seen as like really weak and then she has a lot of freckles on her face which back then you know was really <laughs> seen as a sort of deformity if you will um and she has been arranged by her uncle and aunt who live with her in this uh, manner she's supposed to inherit from her parents they uh they arrange her to get married to this boy the boy does not um, agree to get married to her because there are a lot of women circulating about how weak she is she can't even produce a hair she can't leave her tower otherwise her heart will fail and give up um but obviously none of those things were true the guy sends the guy that's supposed to get married to her sends his brother and his half brother to uh send word that he's not interested in marriage anymore on the day of the wedding right and so while they go there the main brother of the groom to be goes to have a word with the um, uncle and aunt while the half brother is there with her and and she realizes that her sister is not coming her wedding is not going to hold she feels bad because like oh what about the um, party they have prepared for the people of the estate that would they be disappointed and so she proposed because she does she knows that people already don't like her as the lady of the house because of the perception her aunt and uncle have sort of given out and she doesn't want to disappoint them on this big day that everybody has prepared for celebration and so she propositions the half brother of her groom to be to marry her she said she would give him a son and all that and that he will become the owner of the estate right because if he marries her then she can claim her inheritance and through him basically and that she'll give him the estate and all that and so they agree to get married it's sort of an arranged marriage situation but marriage of convenience rather if you will but it's also like really lovely historical romance i feel like historical romances have a way they have to be to hit just right right and this one did it so well like her being so shy and him being more of a, a brute if you will that sort of contrast between them it's always nice once in a while to read those kind of books right and then the last two books i will be recommending uh contemporary books i just feel like <laughs> we can't only just talk about the historical right um but basically i have two contemporary books to recommend for you know cozy rainy days the first one is opposite of always i'm recommending this one because of how wholesome it is so basically we have this girl she has a chronic illness basically that she has sickle cell right um and she meets this guy or this guy meets her how you want to see it right uh, he's a high school senior she's a college student and they meet when he um goes to her school to like sort of feel get a feel for the place and all that and so they have this amazing instant connection i feel like this is one of those books that presents young awkward love in one of the best ways i've read right um and they have this instant connection which is just great they meet and then she dies she dies and he keeps on having this opportunity to go back to the past to sort of save her and he ends up like falling in love with her every time again sometimes he tries to push her away you know sometimes he's not trying to get himself hurt because the outcome is always the same but it's just a really cozy wholesome and also like really painful kind of read and i mean i miss all this coziness you would want to you know feel your heart beat a little and you know really feel for the characters and that is what opposite of always offers right and then the last book i will be recommending is 
plot twist by Bethany Connor. It follows this girl. What's her name now? I've forgotten. But basically, she's an aspiring screenwriter. She's an aspiring screenwriter. And so one day, she's at this cafe. She's trying to write something. And she meets this aspiring actor as well. They meet. And their first meeting is the perfect definition of a meet cute. It was just too good as like it's literally one of the best meet kids i've ever read and um then they when they will have to part ways they make this promise that they will meet at the same place 10 years later same day that's february 4th and all that at that same couch in that same cafe and all that so that because if he was like oh he would love to star in her screenplay and you know because they're both aspiring <laughs> so it's that kind of promise but this book now every february 4th something happens in relation to this guy that she has made this promise with like it's just so fun and cozy in that way that you know that every february 4th that is coming we are expecting some kind of incident and then the romance in this is also really 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 great and just lovely and this book is literally so good with the different tropes it presents you know second chance romance um friendships the friendship in this book was just really amazing you know we have a grown adult trying to find her place in this life and you know exploring opportunities as they come opportunities as they come to her that's what plot twist is so yes my loves those are all the books i recommend for you know the rainy seasons the cozy season here in nigeria i really hope you have had one or two books from this recommendation list added to your video also let me know if you have read any of these books what you think about them down in the comments below and also if you have any more cozy reads to recommend for people watching this video so yes don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i will see you in my next video